All right, good morning, everyone. How we can hear at the back, hopefully. It's good to be back from a lender perspective. It's good to be back out seeing real live people, not just that part of you. Um, I have to say, though, one of the challenges that we have, particularly with those of us that have to wear suits, is getting a post-pandemic body into a pre-pandemic suit. Um, it's been something of a challenge for me. Um, right, quick show of hands. Everybody else has been doing it, so I'm going to follow suit. Equity release. Who in the room is actually qualified and authorised to write equity release business? Well, that's not too bad. It's about average. Brilliant. I get the best gig in the world. I turn up to an event trying to tell you about a product you're not even qualified to sell. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> So you may not be qualified, but I'm going to do my best to infuse and educate you um, as to the whys and wherefores as to why you might want to get involved and engaged with this sector. Um, you'll have heard a lot of stuff about it. It's growing. Um, when is it going to become mainstream? All that stuff. Um, for, 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 for some kind of bad reason, I, mean, I must have done something in a previous life, I've been around Equity Release since 1998. So just about uh, almost as long as the Equity Release Council have themselves. So been around it for a while. Um, I'm fairly experienced. Um, but what we're going to do today is say, look, you know what? It doesn't matter whether you're qualified um, or, or not. The mo most important thing is you understand how it works because for a lot of financial advisors, they really don't. When they talk, you ask a lot of financial advisors what they think about Equity Release, and it's pretty much the same as the general public. They think it's a home aversion plan. In an equity release scheme, I've put, I've, the reason I've used the words lifetime mortgages rather than the words equity release is because it's just a damn mortgage. It is a loan secured against your property. It has a conveyancing process the same as a normal mortgage, okay? Except that there are some additional safeguards. On the panel debate earlier, I made a few notes. Um, it's pretty depressing, to be honest. Inflation, the cost of living going up, the difference between eating and heating. My God. Right? It's something that we do talk about anyway in Equity Release World. Uh, the Bank of Mum and Dad helping first-time buyers, literally thousands and thousands of first-time buyers on the property ladder in the last couple of years without the help of their family couldn't have done it. Um, in a survey that we did, 50% of people that did buy a house couldn't have done it without the help and support of their family. The squeeze on pensions and, of course, the defined benefit pensions. You know, If we look further down the line, if we look 10, 15 years down the line, then there's a lot of people who are going to be retiring without the, the, those kind of pensions. And then, of course, the EPC issue for the, for the buy-to-lets and the green agenda. All of these creating stresses, all of them is good news for equity release, and for, in particular for equity release lenders and financial advisors, because equity release could actually be the answer to a lot of those problems. So we look at the market challenges. Um, for the average person, uh, sitting around the Christmas table um, this year, um, you know, the average 40-year-old or whatever, somebody about my age, gone to Christmas, Christmas dinner because we were allowed to this year with our mum and dads, and they've turned around and said, we've had this fantastic idea. We've spoken to a financial advisor, and we're going to do equity release. Right? For most people, sitting around the dinner table, you, know, you can imagine almost the, the knives and forks going down, you're doing what? Right? Because for most people, they think this is selling the house. This is the problem that we've got. I don't know. I know the sun's coming across this. But basically, people still think, despite the fact that 99.5% of all equity release schemes are a lifetime mortgage, and you can pay the interest if you want, for most people, they still think you're selling the house. For most people, they still think the inheritance is going to go. For a lot of people, they think that security of tenure could be an issue. They could be kicked and forced out of their homes. It's like saying a Skoda is a rubbish car, because 20 or 30 years ago, it was a rubbish car. When you buy a Skoda Superb today, you're buying an LDA6 with a different badge on it. It's a luxury vehicle. You can't compare. It's still called a Skoda. Equity release is still called equity release. Still a way of releasing some capital from your property. It still gets you from A to B. But it does it very, very differently. And so the great thing about coming out and doing gigs like this is we get to educate and, and hopefully enthuse financial advisors to a, to, a, to a different level of understanding. And when we ask financial advisors that are engaged in this sector, they say, what are your biggest challenges? What are the, what's, the, what's the thing stopping you from earning a fortune? What's the thing stopping you from writing more business? 77% said scare stories. You know, the likes of the Daily Mail and other newspapers absolutely love a scare story, don't they? You don't believe a damn thing that they say until the point that they mention the words equity release and suddenly it must be truth, it must be fact. Very, very big problem for equity release. And because of the scare stories and because of the lack of awareness and because people think it's expensive, people will be making that choice between eating and heating. 
People will die of hypothermia, as they've done for many years, because they will not leave the house, that they've got all those memories in, that they're emotionally attached to, but they can't afford to eat. It's ridiculous, but that's where we are. We look at the cost, because, of course, the cost of equity release over the years has been expensive. There was a time as an advisor I was recommending products. There was very, very little competition in the market space. Recommending products with a fixed interest rate for life at eight and a quarter percent, doubled every nine years. Bit of an ouch looking back. Rates are as low as two and a half percent, fixed for life. For some, of our, for some of our customers, that'll be 30, 40 years. Try and get that anywhere else in the mortgage world. Average interest rate actually dropped so low last year that it was just a fraction over 3%. That's the average interest rate that was taken out for lifetime mortgages. That means that loan is going to take over 20 years to double. And think about the good they can do with the £100,000 or whatever it is that they take out of their property. So that's the negative stuff. The opportunity for you, and by the way, can, just again, the guys who are qualified and authorised, stick your hands up in the air. I know you've all come to learn today, but it's a fantastic network opportunity. You know, for those of you that, you know, if you think maybe some of my words today have resonated with you, maybe it can help some of your customers, you know, go and talk to these people after lunch, or over lunch. The market itself saw boom years, and this is why I think the press get on board and say, you know, oh, look at this, this is a thing you want to get involved with, maybe, the financial press. 2019, we stagnated. We were supposed to grow. We did grow, in actual fact. Traditionally, 60% of our customers will want, want to go on holiday, want to go on a cruise, want to change the car, want to do some stuff. 40% of them need customers. I need to pay my mortgage. I need to support my lifestyle because I actually need to pay my gas and electricity bills. And actually, in 2019, it might sound like a bit of a politician's or sales guy's thing, I still argue the market grew because in 2019, we had this little thing called Brexit. Now, I know that's a long time ago and some stuff has happened since then, but actually, from a consumer confidence point of view, everybody thought house prices were going to collapse. So basically, because of Brexit, we got to a situation where only very few people took that positive view about the housing market and thought, I'll just do equity release. So what happened was, instead of it being 60% want and 40% need, it flipped on its head. We had 60% of the customers actually needed to do it. The want customers thought, we'll just wait and see. 2020 came along, said, hold my beer, 2019, I'll show you what catastrophe can look like. Okay, 2020 came along, we couldn't even transact business, but we still held firm for about three months. The customers must have face-to-face -face access to a solicitor. A surveyor will want to go and inspect in all ending, in all ending cases, they will want to go and do an internal inspection. And of course, financial advisors traditionally have wanted to give equity release face-to-face. So we did have a few months, of course, where the, the market was shaken. But we still held firm. Figures for 2021 are out. We've got huge growth, 24%. I think it depends whose figures you're looking at, which way you work them, but roughly 24, 25% growth. Um, going up uh, to, to, to nearly the 5 billion mark, we're at 4.8, and expected to grow again this year. From a point of opportunity, that's really good news for financial advisors. In terms of product innovation, this is the fantastic thing. There was a time when your research would have been, on one page, two products. There are nearly 1,000 products now by the end of 2021. We're looking at nearly 1,000 products available. That's nuances of products, not necessarily individual products and lenders, but it is a lot. Not only that, the most important thing is, it's not just that we've got lots of products, we've also got a lot of features. A lot of these features are really, really important because they give consumers choice. We don't have little old ladies who are vulnerable on a Zimmer frame at 80 years old taking out equity release to pay gas and electricity bills generally. There's a huge drive from the wealth market, huge. Average property value for Canada Life in the first quarter of last year was over a million pounds on 30% of our cases. 30%, huge. Our average case size is larger than the average, but we also have an awful lot of features and benefits that are in there. This isn't a plug for us. Those features and benefits aren't USPs. They are generic now. Fixed early repayment charges. Very, very important. The ability to pay the interest. The, 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 the lenders are taking more types of property into account, including sheltered accommodation, which is something historically that we haven't necessarily liked. We've got the interest-only time bomb that we continually talk about, the need 
for equity release to repay these interest-only mortgages that are on your books is there and it's growing for another 10 years. By the time we get 10 years down the road, the good news is that people will realise what, what, what equity release is. They will realise what a lifetime mortgage is. The next demographic of people will come through with a different, a, a different feeling for what they want to do with their money and how they look at their property. So actually, just as the IO mortgage um, need drops, so the, the, hopefully the reputation of these products will be in a place where actually people go, right, part of my retirement strategy is to do equity release at some point. We do have some issues in that nobody ever wants to leave from their property, so like where would the grandkids go at Christmas, you know, that kind of thing. So they'll stay in a property they can't afford to heat, they can't afford to run, um, council tax is going up, every, everything is going up, inflation, the bills, everything is going up, but they will still stay in that property because they don't want to downsize. A vast majority of people will stay in a property that they don't really need to live in. The impact of COVID-19 has been a big thing for us. And I think what it's really done is it's made people question their mortality. It's questioned where they live. They start to question what might happen if they need care. They've started to think about their vulnerability. All of these things have been questions that we've asked of ourselves and we've seen probably within your own family, certainly within my family. These are all questions that we've, that, that we've you know, talked about, which we probably wouldn't have talked about pre-pandemic. Paying for care is a big one as well. A lot of people don't want to care, go into care, but they see a lifetime mortgage as a way of paying for care in their own home. So domiciliary care is, to a lot of people, you know, preferable. So how do they afford to do that? I have an aunt in exactly that situation, 86 years old, completely immobile, but she pays for that support and help in her own home because she doesn't want to go into a care home. Equity release can be a big supporting uh, factor for that type of situation. The other issue we've got is the pensions. I mentioned this at the top, um, the top of the presentation. You know, people aren't going to have defined pensions in the, in the same way as they have done, defined benefit pensions in the same way as they have done. Those will gradually phase out. Equity release will hopefully phase back in again. And for high net worth with an IHT problem, we, have, um, we actually have another presentation actually to show that there are benefits for people with an IHT problem to leave the pensions exactly where they are right now and then take the property wealth first and take the pension second. Yeah. So that can actually be really, really beneficial for the high net worths. And we do see wealth managers entering this space, and certainly we see very, very wealthy individuals. Again, the newspapers will have you believe that you know, some nasty financial advisor and lender has ripped off some little old lady. In, in reality, we've got laws ladies, celebrities, people that you all know taking out equity release. I guarantee you, no matter what age you are, that level of celebrity that level of wealth, taking out equity release. One chap last year raised £445,000 to buy a boat. You know, that kind of thing is taking place. Typical customer, much younger, I think, than most people would have you believe. So actually, we're talking to, generally speaking, couples, generally speaking, southeast. good news for you guys. The average, the average size of the release that you will do will be far greater than the average. Um, across the country, our experience is 106000 yours is more likely to be closer to 200. And with prop fees at 2%, maybe, or maybe 3%, it's not a bad place to be for a financial advisor. Average property value 400,000, but like I say, that includes all of the north and the southwest and so on. We do deal with a lot of high net worth individuals. In terms of what they're doing with the money, doing quite a lot. 20 years ago, it would have been, the mister would have got a car, missus would have got a kitchen, and they went on a few holidays. Nowadays, there's a lot of gifting going on. A third, actually, across the market, a third of the money that's released ends up in the hands of the children, whether that's IHT mitigation or whether it's getting first-time buyers on the property ladder. Um, and clearing outstanding mortgage, clearing outstanding debts. We've seen as much as £200,000 on credit cards being repaid through a lifetime mortgage. So the way it's being used is very different, but it can be very supportive, particularly to mortgage brokers. You know, and there is that idea that you know, if you can get that deposit up, if nan and granddad, mum and dad are prepared to give mom, the kids a little bit more of a deposit, then the overall cost of their borrowing will be lower. And it's an easier mortgage for you to place. In terms of products, it is available on second homes and buy-to-let as well as main residences. 
We're the only lender that lend on second homes and buy-to-lets, but it is possible. If I had half an hour or so here, I'd be talking to you about the buy-to-let product and exactly how that can help. But certainly with these EPCs and green things coming up, with all of that issue coming to the fore in the next few years, you know, it might be that portfolio landlords are looking for ways to raise capital to get those EPC ratings to where they need to be in order to continue to let out their properties. Generally speaking, the products are available from 55. Generally speaking, they're cheap to get into, free valuations, no application fees, that kind of thing. Um, so, so from a point of view of a consumer getting into the product, it's not expensive. Um, generally speaking, loans up to about a million pounds. One of the things if you're entering the market is that underwriting tends to be much stricter in equity release world than it will be in your normal resi world. We will turn down properties that you think, what, are you nuts? But that is just the way it is. We've got a compounding loan potentially in place for 20 or 30 years, maybe even 40. So just bear that in mind. If you, if you, if you get entering the space and you need to speak to underwriters, um, then you, know, you need to get hold of the lenders and make sure that they're happy to do it. And in terms of getting into the market space, I'll just throw this at you. Canada Life are renowned for uh, advisor training. Um, we're pretty damn good at it, actually, and we employ some very, very good trainers. Um, if you're interested in equity release, we can get you qualified. So please, I mean, these slides will be shared with you, but there's a website address here at the bottom, advisor support. We will train you and we'll get you qualified. Trouble is with the qualification, a little bit like driving a car, it doesn't necessarily teach you how to drive a car, you get taught how to pass a test. So then we give another workshop called Future Proofing Your Business. So now I've got a tick in the box, I don't really know what I'm doing, what do I need to know about vulnerable customers, the Capacity Act, all of those type of issues. So we'll help you to, to give advice in this area safely. And then if you get a taste for it and you like it and you're doing five or 10 cases a year and you want to make that maybe 20 or 30 or 40 cases a year, we'll try and get you busy. So we'll show you how to market your business, how to grow your equity release business. And I'll tell you what, for those advisors that do engage with this sector, it's amazing how quickly they try and drop normal mortgages and make that their mainstream business. Like I said, it's a profitable place to be. And actually it's a nice place to be, a place I miss an awful lot since I came across the lender world. It, it really is. I mean, daytime appointments, lovely cups of tea and cake. It's a nice... I used to say my job was 20 hours a week of socialising and 40 hours a week of admin as an equity relief specialist. And that's it from me. Uh, these slides will be shared, so all of the contact details are on here. If you are qualified and you need any of our team, all of the details will be on the slides. And um, I think we're here for a Q&A now, aren't we? So uh, I'll uh, see yeah. you all over lunch.